Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of D&D's Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realmsmith. I am your host, as usual, Jason Azevedo, um, and want to greet you all on this wonderful uh, Happy Mother's Day. Um, to all you moms out there, uh, a massive salute um, for doing an incredible duty and job, especially uh, during this tough time where uh, a lot of you are not only moms, but you're also teachers and you're also um, all kinds of things. So while you're still trying to hold down a job at home and still trying to take care of your kids and teach them and all that stuff, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, to my mom, to Mel, to all those wonderful people holding down the fort um, to make this world kind of go on and, and help us to kind of survive. So massive shout out to moms today. Can't say that enough um lots in the chat today i'm so happy to see you all um a couple quick announcements first of all of course our sponsors as usual um dungeons and dragons for having us of course on their channel and allowing us to do what we do um whiz kids for the miniatures that we paint on this show including the baylor today you guys asked for it you're getting it uh, and of course, Vallejo for all the wonderful, awesome, incredible paint that they give us uh, in order to do this. And they are paid sponsors, so we thank Vallejo, of course, for the ongoing support that they uh, give us week in, week out, um, because they're awesome over there. Um, hope everyone is safe. Hope everyone is doing well. Tomorrow night is episode six. That is halfway through. I can't believe it. we're already halfway through the Tides of Wildmount campaign. Uh, that is based on the Explorer's Guide to Wildmount, Wildmount World uh, of, of Critical Role. So if you need your Critical Role fix um, while they are uh, kind of on hiatus right now, uh, you can join us uh, for a little bit of that. All of those episodes are on YouTube. Uh, we're also working on catching up on the, the, the episodes of this show on YouTube uh, because we've been a little behind and a little delayed in getting those loaded to our YouTube, but they absolutely exist on the uh, Dungeons and Dragons YouTube. So you can go there as well uh, as the VODs go up on both of those. Um, kind of, uh, well, d and is way better at putting it live on their YouTube page than I am. Uh, they usually do it the, the next day. So um, we're thankful to them for that. Also, we have new merch uh, in our shop. That's a way to kind of help us out during this crazy time. Uh, you can check that out in the Twitch window below. Uh, and that is, uh, we added a couple new t-shirts for our Tides of Wildmount campaign. Um, and as well, um, for the adventure boxes that we offer, uh, unfortunately right now we are not taking new subscriptions, um, but we are fulfilling the subscriptions that we have until we run out and then we will pause your account as need be. Um, thanks of course to all of the moderators on the D and D side. I want to thank you, thank DC Lasser and Jack's Not Funny, of course, for their awesome work that they constantly do. And then on our side, Shadster and Prometheus Bound are your uh, moderators for this evening. Um, and I think that's all the announcements right now. I already see questions starting to come in, so we'll have to kind of back up to the beginning of all of this and uh, go down. If you do want to ask a question, make sure that you write question before the question. Apparently, um, Bruno has a question. Um, write question before your question so that while I'm scrolling down, all I'm looking for is that word question. So if you don't write it in big caps, uh, I will not see it. So just make sure that you do that so that I can actually see what's going on. What is going on over there? Uh, also, if you do like what you see, uh, if you follow us, this little potion vial will blink once, uh, purple once for a, uh, for a follow. And then if you subscribe to us either using Twitch Prime or you're just regular Twitch subscription, it will blink a bunch of times blue. And that's just to let you guys know that we're here in real time or let us know that you're here and you're supporting us. And just a little bit of a cool kind of um, nod to uh, those that support us on a regular basis that we are so freaking thankful for. Couldn't do it without you. Let's dive in. We've already wasted enough time today. Sorry, I was delayed. Here we go. So first, of course, you need the Baylor, which is the Dungeons and Dragons Baylor, um, based on the entry from the Monster Manual. Of course, we're using some Vallejo brushes. That is, I have a one, a number two, a number four today, and then a larger brush for some of the base coating as well. Um, we're going to need some water for diluting our paints and cleaning our brushes, as well as paper towel for dry brushing and cleaning those brushes. And then a paint palette, of course, for mixing and for holding our paint. 
Lots of paints today. There's 14. I actually had to cut it down. I would have added more. There's lots of different colors in this miniature um, that, or that are rather required for this mini. So um, I had to kind of take it easy on the color list. But we've got heavy red, bloody red, and orange fire for the skin. Then we've got dead white for a number of different uh, aspects of the miniature uh, with a black wash used for the skin and for the wings and for the clothing. Heavy brown and heavy sienna for wings and clothing. Blue ink for the cool uh, electrical uh, sword, energy sword that he has. Uh, and then yellow for the flame whip uh, thingy that he has. Glorious gold for some of the gold highlights. Of course, gut metal for the metal highlights. Uh, and then heavy blue gray for the hair that we will be using dead white as a, as a highlight on. Bone white for the skulls and then a sepia wash to finish off those skulls man bruno you are just losing it eh buddy what's going on over there all right so this is the awesome baylor mini from uh whiz kids uh it comes straight out of the dm or sorry not the dm the monster manual this is the um color reference that we will be using today it's an incredible miniature and an incredible uh creature it's obviously a, a demon um uh, and uh, it's got lots of things. So it's got a long sword, um, and it does that does lightning damage, which I mentioned is the kind of the energy sword that he has there. He's got a whip, which is the flame whip, which also do, does fire damage, um, and then he can also teleport. And we can read some of this stuff as things are sort of um, as things are moving along here. If if we need some drying time or whatever the case may be, um, but very cool. And we are going to jump in and do that today. Oh, knocking cameras again, as usual. All right. So to start things off, we are going to use... I had that color here. I don't know where it went. Where's my heavy red color? I brought all the colors in here. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 colors. For some reason, heavy red is not here, unless I am completely blind. What do I have two of? I'm so confused. Heavy red was on there, right, folks? Mm -hmm. Let's make sure that heavy red was on there. Yep, heavy red right there. I don't know what I did. That is very, very, very strange. Oh, uh, I got the wrong color. I need to be back. I will be right back, folks. I got a red ink instead of a heavy red. It happened to be in the same area. Uh, so I'll need to grab that. That's what happens, folks, when you're trying to celebrate Mother's Day. And then you jump in to a painting tutorial. And that's why I was delayed, folks. I was celebrating some mother's day action all right here we go okay okay here we go heavy red now heavy red is an extra opaque paint um, as many of you know it should go down or on in one coat that is what the extra opaque paints are really great at we are going to use that for all of the skin on the mini um i'm actually not going to use I, i've brought a really big brush for this but the miniature is actually a little smaller than I thought it was, even though it's way big compared to like a normal mini would probably be about this size. So Baylor, super, super awesome. Um, but uh, I'm just going to use a, a number four, which is actually a dry brush. But we're just going to go in here and get all of the skin areas, starting with the legs and then moving our way up. hope everybody is healthy and keeping safe and keeping entertained. Hope you all are painting many miniatures. All right, let me, lots of questions here. Let's see. Um, right up to the top. And I'm just, again, folks, I'm just looking for that big question indicator. So if I miss your question, then please ask it later down the line um, dun, 
Da -da -da. Oh, snap it, snap his gift in tears. Thank you so much. I don't even know if this is going off. Has this been going off, guys? I think we're having some connection issues with it for some reason. I tested it and it worked in the test but for some reason. Doesn't seem to be working. Question, first question of the night from Gary Diamonds. Do you have any plans to bring back the vote for inspiration from Dragon's Bane? Would love to see that again. Um, I do have some plans for inspiration uh, and ways to gift it to our players. So uh, I will absolutely be uh, rolling that out in the next few weeks is the plan. So great question, Gary. Um, that is absolutely in the works. Question, have you painted an, an it? I'm not sure, Sakura, if you missed the rest of it. Uh, a, a mind flare. Have you painted a mind flare? I have not painted a mind flare on screen, uh, on, on stream, sorry. Um, I actually don't have a mind flare uh, mini. I don't think an unpainted mind flare. Maybe I do. I'd have to check. But if I have one and I haven't painted one, then I think that is absolutely something that I will do in an upcoming stream. Because mind flares are creepy and wonderful all at the same time. I don't know if you guys can hear Bruno just snoring in the background. No understanding, no value for the fact that I'm streaming doesn't even care couldn't care less folks he's just just out all right so that is good at start got the legs done go in here on the chest and you want to make sure again when paint when base coating that you go over the seam a little bit between different areas that are going to be different colors and that just helps to eliminate white lines in between your areas on the miniature. Um, remember that the paint that you'll be adding afterwards in those areas is going to cover the paint that we're laying down now. So this is such a great red and it goes, it goes on so nicely. You do have to watch not to get red on the clear effects like I just did. We don't want paint on those because we're going to be using inks and some other cool techniques to make those look awesome later. But you just wanna make sure that you have a nice solid red coat on this. Um, all these questions. Let us see. Chevy Yo has uh, subscribed. Thank you so much. Again, I don't think that thing's going off, guys. I'm so sorry for some reason. Question, is Bruno still wearing a cone of shame? No, he's not. Three gun pets. Thank you for asking. Um, he, his eye is better, and he is good to go. He has not had a cone now for about a week, and uh, he's loving the freedom, and he's a bit of a different dog than he was with that thing on. Poor guy. So I'm just glad that his eye is healed and that we don't have to have it on him anymore because he was pretty miserable. And you don't quite realize the effect it's having on them until you get your your dog back after uh, something like that. So, so glad he's doing great and uh, his allergies seem to be in check for now, which is a major issue that we have with him. Um, but yeah, he's doing great. Thank you for asking. Um, also, with these WizKids minis, it's okay to bend wings and stuff. These these are very malleable and and um, flexible, so you can kind of if you have to get into certain areas that are difficult, you can just kind of bend things into place. Look how nice and solid that red goes on. So good. All right, some more questions here. 
My local game shop doesn't sell the game color range. Is there a good alternative? Noah's Minis, that's a great question. Um, you can catch some of the same colors if they carry model color. Then that's a good way to do it. Uh, I mean, next to Vallejo, any of the other kind of major paint brands are, are decent. Uh, and you can usually find equivalents. Um, but if you can't find them at your local game store, um, you can try and order Vallejo online uh, or at uh, perhaps a neighboring store. I, I don't know if you're local game or ask your local game store to order it for you. They can do that too. Um, I mean, I know lots of stores because I do a lot of trade shows with Vallejo and uh, I know a lot of stores. The reason they get Vallejo in the store is because their um, customers uh, request it often over and over and over again uh, until they finally get it in. So um, you know, just let your store know that you'd like to, to try it or, or have it. But yes, um, they're are alternatives but in my opinion like i said this is the best pain line out there and not just because they're a sponsor they are awesome now when i say these are malleable and you can bend them some parts are some parts not so much so don't um put too much elbow grease into it uh, like this arm isn't really bendable but these wings woo are, which help it make it a lot easier to get into kind of the nooks and crannies. Okay. Oh, forgot he's got bare feet. Question from Oh Snap It's Nap. Not to beat a dead horse, but just to make sure I understand, if I already have a monthly subscription, I will continue receiving it until they run out, right? I already received my first box and it was amazing. Snap, that is absolutely the case. So if if we have uh, whatever box is next, we will continue shipping boxes until we are out of that box. Once we're out, unfortunately at that point, we'll have to pause your subscription and wait for our um, our suppliers to get product back in uh, and, then, and then continue to ship. So um, yes, if you're a current subscriber of our adventure boxes, you will be able to um, continue to get it. And I think you posted pictures of it, and I'm just so happy that you're enjoying that first box so much. Um, it makes us sad and obviously very difficult on us to have to pause our business uh, right now. But unfortunately, we don't really have a choice um, for the time being. So, But hopefully that will change soon. Let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope. All right. Um... I think I'm going to switch maybe, yeah, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush so I'm not getting red. As I'm painting these hands, I don't want to get that red paint onto the clear effects. So I think I've painted all of the red areas that I need to. So I'm just going to switch to my number two, which is just a thinner, a thinner brush. And not trying, just trying to stay off that clear effect on the sword. Obviously, I'm concentrating because I'm not talking. Sometimes that will happen. Especially when doing eyeballs. If I'm doing eyeballs, I'm always a little quieter. There we go. I don't think there's a fist on the fire one. No, there's no fist. Because I think it's all flame. So, okay. Good stuff. Oh, I missed some red on the face. And this is the opportunity now that it's uh, most of it's dry is to go around and just fill in any areas that you missed. Which I'm noticing a bunch. Sneaky little spots, eh? Sneaky spots. Okay, I keep hitting this camera. I'm trying to get closer for you folks because I know you you typically ask for me to get a little tighter in on the mini. So, all right. 
Question, what do you find to be the best material in minis to paint on? Um, that is from Dinesh, uh, Dineshi1 on the uh, D&D chat. Um, I actually love this material. I love this pre-painted WizKids mini material. Um, a primer, a fresh primer is good too. So if you have a miniature and you freshly primed it, that takes the paint really well. Um, but, uh, but I just love that I can just pull these out of the package. I don't have to prime them and they're ready to go. Um, again, sounds like a canned answer, but it's not I actually really enjoy painting these because, uh, priming stuff, even though it's necessary, typically in this hobby is a pet peeve of mine. So, uh, I do not enjoy that process. It feels good when they're primed and you're ready to go, but uh, I much prefer, uh, pre-primed miniature if I can have one. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so we're going to let that red dry before we give it a wash. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start to... Hmm. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start base coating some of the other areas just while I'm waiting for for that to dry so I can put a wash on it. Uh, I'm gonna grab the heavy sienna at this point. Heavy sienna again, another extra opaque color. And we're gonna give the some of the areas a nice healthy coat with this. Um, how do you pick the colors based on the image? Good question, Scuba. Uh, that comes with uh, practice um, and just repetition uh, a lot of times, frankly. Um, I'm going to use that heavy sienna here on kind of this leathery loincloth that he's wearing. Um, yeah, a lot of repetition. I Watching a lot of tutorials is actually where I kind of learned what colors kind of go with what miniature. I don't know why my camera here is is, uh, is lagging a bit, so I apologize, guys. Not quite sure why that is. Um, I may need to figure that out real quick if it continues. Please let me know if it continues uh, if I'm not watching. But it's, yeah, it's lagging out. Um, sorry, question, uh, colors. Yeah. So, um, just actually watching tutorials and kind of learning a, a little bit about color theory. So from school and just from being an artist and kind of learning what colors go well together and understanding the color wheel, um, that's all great stuff. And there's tons of videos on the color wheel and how to blend colors and pick colors that complement each other uh, and go well together. Um, and like I said, via osmosis, watching tutorials, uh, and then not only kind of applying what you're watching on the tutorials to specific minis, but applying it across your knowledge base of that color. So if I were to use that color again on a miniature, what colors would I use as a base? What would I use as a wash? All of that kind of stuff. So for me, I, I it just comes naturally. I know, okay, I need a, a heavy red for the base because I know it's a thick red and I want it to be, um, go, I want it to go on, on, sorry, on in one coat and be nice and thick um, or opaque. So uh, I'm going to use a heavy red and then go from there. And then I'm like, okay, well, I don't want it to be kind of a pink color when I, um, when I highlight it, I want it to go into the orange world. Um, and so then I will pick orange fire as kind of, or bloody red and then orange fire as kind of the highlight. So, yeah, I think it just comes with practice and, and, um, repetition. But watching these tutorials will absolutely kind of help because now anytime you have something that has kind of red hues or red skin, maybe you'll follow the same sort of technique. Uh, from D. Nicole, when you do the lighting, so, lightning sword and whip, will you do, be doing light effects on his skin as a reflection for the weapons? 
Uh, not this time, I don't think. I would love to. Really depends on how long it... Whoa, hey, Bruno. Really depends on how long it takes to get through... Uh, to get through the mini. Uh, I don't know if we have enough time for that. Um, but if we end up going to two sessions for this, which I don't think we will, but if we end up going to two sessions, then yeah, I will... Um, then I can maybe do some lighting effects and stuff. But I have done lighting effects on other tutorials uh, on our channel, so you can check you can check some of those out. Uh, I did some on the Frost Giant because that was a three-parter. Um, I can't remember where else I did it, but I know I've done it other places as well. So unfortunately, not for this one, I don't think. Although this one would be a perfect, perfect miniature for lighting effects. or what we call OSL, or object source lighting, which means light that comes not from a natural source, like a sun, necessarily, but like from a from an object um, that the mini is holding, or that is beside him, like a torch, or fire, or a magical weapon, or something like that, that glows. I am totally off camera, sorry guys. Just trying to get into all the cracks here. This is a miniature, I will say, that has a lot of kind of hidden areas with wings and weapons and isn't a very open uh, miniature. It's a closed miniature, so it does take some acrobatics to try and not get the fire effects, um, or sorry, the clear effects with paint um, or get paint onto the other areas that you've already base coated. It's... It's a little bit of finagling. Um, when you, uh, from the Rolling Meeple, I don't have the extra opaques yet. Any others I can use? Yes, absolutely. You can use, uh, and, and typically in the, in the range, there are more or less equivalents uh, to these colors. Um, so instead of heavy red, you could probably just use bloody red, um, and you'll get more or less the same result. It's not the exact color, but you can still use like a deep red. It just may take a extra um, coat or two to cover completely. Although the the Vallejo paints tend to go on fairly, fairly um, thoroughly, so um, perhaps you don't need. Too much. So yeah, for, for the heavy red, you could probably just use bloody red. Just go to the next kind of level. For the heavy sienna, you could probably use like charred brown, which is a little darker, but you'll get kind of the same the same tone from all right. So that is the leather on his kind of loincloth area. His Bracers, I'm going to do um, metal. And I think completely metal. Look at me yawning. Um, and I don't know. I might want to do his wings kind of like a heavy brown instead of this heavy sienna. So I'm just going to leave that there, I think. Um, is, and I am going to do the... Gun metal for all the metal areas because then I can use my black wash across the entirety of the mini, more or less, or of all the areas that I've already done. Um, and then go on to paint the skulls. So this is going to be take a little bit of time, just base coating all of these areas. And I'm using this gun metal for his bracers. Um, oh, just for his, they're not really boots because they, the ankle lits, <laughs> I don't know what these would be called. You guys probably know better than I do what armor around the shin and calf area that does not have a boot on it or a foot on it is called, it's like a leg bracer. Um, I 
3.5Geek says, has Bruno fully recovered from his cornea? Yes, he has. Thank you for asking again. Um, I think I just uh, answered that for somebody else, but I uh, really, you probably, I'm taking a while to get down the chat, so uh, you probably didn't hear that answer before I answered. Um, but uh, thank you for asking so much. He is absolutely recovered. He's got a little bit of a scar, a little kind of uh, cloudy area in his eye, but it doesn't seem to be bothering him. So I think we are in the clear, and I thank everyone for your concern. Really appreciate that. It means a lot. Um, yes, I know. I, I keep moving the... I apologize. I'll move the camera up a little bit more so that... So that I can get um, more of what I'm doing here, folks. Sorry. Uh, I know that there's been some comments, um, some constructive, some not so constructive on my videos regarding um, the fact that I paint off screen. It's very difficult to do this um, sometimes because uh, I don't want to look through the camera to paint my mini um, because there's just something weird about doing that. I just haven't mastered that ability or even gotten a grasp at all on how to paint kind of through the camera lens so i'm not going to do that um and so sometimes you know watching the miniature and then also watching the camera to make sure i'm on it is a bit of a, of a challenge so i apologize to everyone for for that but i am trying i am absolutely trying all right um Uh, do you ever use sculpting clay to individualize your minis? I have in the past uh, when I was into wargaming. That's a question from Prometheus Bound. Um, and, of course, one of our moderators. Uh, but, no, I, I have many times for wargaming, uh, Warhammer and all that kind of stuff, but not for D&D &D yet. Uh, I've considered it for, like, um, player character miniatures to give them something a little bit more. Um, or, for example... Um, my Crichton miniature, he has a, a katana now, so I wanted to add one to the mini without ordering a new Hero Forge mini. So, um, but I haven't got around to doing that just yet. But I, I, I use, typically I use green stuff, um, which works quite well. So that is metal, and then we have all of these chains and the bracers. Lots of gifting tiers. Dean Nicole, thank you for gifting all those tiers. Holy cow, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Noah's Mini says, um, as soon as you can subscribe for the boxes again, do you guys ship to Europe, or is it for the States only? We do ship to Europe, uh, Noah's Minis, but unfortunately it takes forever and is expensive. Um, we haven't quite figured out the international shipping like out of outside of North America yet. Um, it might have to mean that we set up kind of uh, distribution out there. And that's difficult to do, so and takes a lot of resources. So we, as of right now, do ship, but it takes long. We do have people who wait a long time for their, and pay quite a bit in shipping, um, but are happy when they finally get them. So it's really up to you folks, but I, I have to kind of give you that disclaimer of the extra shipping costs and time that it takes to get to places because it's not easy and it's not preferable. We don't like it, but we also don't like to not, um, you know, provide you folks a service. So we're we're trying to work out the whole the whole Europe thing. Try and try and try. But thank you for your interest. It's really awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um. All this gunmetal. Okay, so legs are done, belt is done, and then we're going to do the bracers here. Probably could have done like leather in between the bracers, but not too concerned about it right now. Uh, 
Uh, oh, a couple questions in the D and D chat. Do you like using mini holder clamps to hold it onto your bare hand? Yes, actually, I do like using those, uh, and I may actually go get mine because um, I'm going to get to a point here where I can't hold the wings anymore, uh, and it's going to be difficult to hold this mini. So I do like using that with my, uh, with me getting older and doing this all the time. I paint almost every day, uh, something, one thing or another. Um, it becomes quite uh, a strain on my fingers and my wrists and stuff. So those mini holders really help to kind of uh, spread out the, so you're not like holding something like this for a long period of time, just helps to rest that miniature in your hand a bit more loose and a bit more um, controlled, I guess. Less strained, probably a good word for it. Okay, so we've got that bracer all done here, and then I've got to follow this, this around the, it looks like these chains go to this Kind of area around his, he's got straps or something. And another question from the D and D chat: um, What color wash or dry brush color on Bugbear with Beastly Brown as a ba Beastly Brown as base? Good question, Beastly Brown. I would use uh, depends on what you're looking for, like the tone of uh, depends on the tone of brown that you're looking for. I would use. Looking for more of an earthy, I would use something like filthy or plague brown uh, for that. If you're looking for something a bit more kind of cold and um, like washed out, I would use khaki uh, and mix it in um, in levels. I would do that, um, and I would use a, a black wash on beastly brown. Again, that's general. It really depends on what you're painting. Um, and uh, and that would usually determine kind of the colors that you would use. But I'm assuming something earthy or like leather and stuff, and that's what I would use. If you're just going for true brown. Okay, and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna make these straps metal as well. That kind of extend around his arms here. We also have a Discord for those of you that are out there, and that's a great place when you finish your own Baylor or any of the miniatures that we paint. We love to see your creations, and that's that's a perfect place to to post them. Is in our painting thread on our Discord, so you can check that out. Um, the links are are in the chat. Uh, our awesome moderators post them often. can jump into the discord and lots of cool little cha cha channels and threads in there the one that's uh, growing quite a bit and is just kind of mind-blowing for me is the fan art channel um, some of our community um, are are creating fan art for uh, our characters for our streams and it's wild to see it's so cool, so honored that you guys would take your time to invest in our characters and in our world like that. It means a lot, so keep keep it up. Keep doing it because it, it makes us super, super happy and super fulfilling, so. The creativity is incredible. Okay, um, it's a little messy uh, around the chains, but I think the wash is quite, will be quite um, forgiving on those, I think. Um, and again, those straps are straps. They're not quite chains, I don't think. They look like kind of black, yeah. Because there's some also around his chest here. Um, which I may do in brown instead, now that I think about it. 
Um, uh, questions. Uh, how is your paint setup? I just started and use aluminum to put my paint. But I see you have a big mix right next to you. Yes, so I'm just using um, a big palette. Uh, and this is, again, <clears throat> this may be bad palette etiquette. I don't clean my palettes after I use them. I just basically um, put paint in until I can peel it all off and then I continue to go. So probably can't clean my palette like once a week. And my allergies are starting up. Um, just the season. But, uh, but yeah, um, so I just use a the top of a basically like a paint hobby uh, container carrier organizer thing. Um, there are better ways to use a palette out there. There are better palettes. Um, I'm super interested in getting a wet palette. I've, I have been for a while. So I'm just repainting these um, these straps on the arms in a heavy sienna instead of that that gunmetal just because I think that they'd be probably leather and it also gives kind of further textures uh, other than just the metal everywhere. Imagine they're like binding straps for this Baylor. These things are wild. Bonus points if you can pinpoint or call out um, a, a legendary series of novels and movies that used a Baylor quite prominently, or a creature like a Baylor quite prominently in their storytelling on one of the scenes. Okay, so that is that. Sorry for all the sniffling, folks. Um, okay, so that is, I think that's all the stuff that I'm going to, except for his horns, actually. Um, his horns are also going to be, they're going to be black. So I'm going to use a um, heavy blue-gray as, as a base for this, even though, again, they're supposed to be black. Um uh, or do I want to use the kind of a blacky color? You know what? They have a little bit of brown in them, so I'm actually going to use the heavy sienna as well on the horns, and I'll just highlight them a little differently than the leather to kind of have it stand out a bit. But once I put a black wash on it, it's going to darken it up quite a bit, and it'll, I'll get the effect that I'm looking for. Yeah, that fantasy creature in that novel series, that, <laughs> it's kind of a silly on-the-nose uh, reference, but even the words in the uh, name of the creature are, or even the letters in the name of the creature are the same across both with a couple different things. Um, not quite done. I thought it was done the chains, but I am not. Alas, I have more to do. Uh, question came, um, came in late. What is the exact red you started with? Uh, Michael, I am using a heavy uh, sorry, heavy red. It's an extra opaque paint from um, Vallejo Game Color. Um, 
Question from Kitamari. My Vallejo paints seem to be more watery than yours. They often come out initially as a bubble. I shake my paints. Am I doing something wrong? Uh, you just need to really shake them. If they're coming out uh, watery, that's probably because um, they've been sitting wherever they've been sitting for a while. Uh, and all of the pigment is in the bottom of the, of the, the bottle. Um, you can, what some people do to kind of help to agitate the paint up is to... Um, is to put a little little BBs, um, little non-rusting stainless steel, I guess, BBs in their bottles. Uh, I think that's the non-rusting kind. I've never done it. Um, if you are in the chat and uh, you know what I'm talking about, please post a clarification there. But yeah, if you put little BBs in it and then you shake it, it'll agitate the, the pigment a lot easier and better and, and mix it better. Um, so that's and, and stop it from kind of like mixing too much. Um, so that's an option. Um, the other option is just what I do is I turn it up right upside down because it usually rests here and I shake, 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 shake until it kind of thickens up a bit. So that, that is what I would suggest. You know, the, the shelf life on these Vallejo paints is about five years. So it usually doesn't, it's not that your paint is gone bad. It's just that it has rested from sitting for too long on whatever shelf or it has been on. Okay, so a little messy, but it works. Now I can go ahead and add my black wash there. Uh, have you ever used mini LED lights in your minis? And if you did, if you if you do, do you recommend it? Uh, I used it a lot in uh, again wargaming, uh, Warhammer tanks, things like that. Um, I haven't used it in D and D yet, but I would. Uh, and I've used many like LEDs in my terrain, so I absolutely. I think if that's something that you want to do, um, then you should absolutely try it. It really is impressive on the table. It looks really cool. If you can make it work, I mean, this Baylor. If you could make it work and have an LED in his in his uh, flame whip thing. That would be incredible, I imagine, at the table or in his sword somehow. I mean, obviously, you'd probably put it in his uh, uh, fist. Actually, for the Baylor, you could actually wrap the, co the, the wire before you, prime, before you paint it, wrap the wire around his arm from wherever, uh, and then build a base basically to hold the battery pack. Um, and then it would just look like the rest of the straps that he has on him. Uh, that would be really cool too. Just going in here now and, and touching up some of the metal that I got onto the skin in certain areas. It's hard not to. I probably should have painted the metal on first. Okay. All right. Time for a wash. That's going to be a black wash over everything that we've already painted so far. Um, t -t -t -t. Working my way down the questions here. Question from Corgi. Korg. Korgik. 88. Um, they say, I usually, uh, sorry. Uh, hey, Jason, how are you today? I'm well, thank you. Except I'm a little stuffed up for my uh, allergies. How long does it take for you to decide which mini to paint each week? What's the process behind your choice? Excluding the minis that you need for your D&D &D session. Um, I like, hmm. for me, it's not clinical. It's creative. It's a creative process that I like to, to take. So, or I like to indulge in. And it's also my hobby on top of it. So I like to paint things that I'll enjoy painting. Um, so literally, I will kind of midweek start thinking about the miniature that I want to do. Uh, I'll consider what people are asking for. Um, this is a perfect example. I wanted to paint the Baylor, but it was kind of sitting in my thing. I didn't really need it for my, well, my players better hope I don't need it for my, uh, for my campaign. So, uh, but it was, like I said, something that I wanted to paint. And I was like, you know what? Why don't I do the Baylor? People have been asking for it. So I'd say 50% what the community is asking me to paint and what you guys have kind of requested uh, I'd say 25% based on, uh, well, really based on what I have. 
So I don't know what, what percentage that would be, but if I don't have the mini, I can't paint it. So it has a huge, huge um, bearing, obviously, on what I do uh, based on my current stock of WizKids minis. Um, and then And then just, you know, personal preference. What is fun? What have I painted in a while? What colors haven't I used in a while? Um, what may I use in my campaign at some point, but don't necessarily need now, but would be fun to paint? What do I just want to paint because it's fun? Uh, all of that, all of those questions are questions that I ask myself when deciding kind of what to what to paint and what to choose for upcoming sessions. Good question. Lord Ulrich says, I usually paint in the garage, but with summer coming, it gets pretty warm. How does heat affect the Vallejo paint? It'll dry faster. Uh, I don't know if it'll have any other adverse effects personally, um, but I do know that it will absolutely dry faster if you're in the heat. So just be prepared for that. Wet palette would be good if you're going to be painting in the garage in the summer um, because it'll just keep the, the paint moister for longer. Um but yeah, other than that, I don't know if it has any kind of chemical reaction to the heat. Um, I don't usually paint outside. Um, and anytime it's been warm in my house, uh, exceptionally warm, the heating's on or um, I'm right under a vent or something. All that really happens at that point is that it, like I said, dries faster and just takes longer to dry. Oh, sorry. And the, the, the paint doesn't last as long in your palette. But other than that... It's a good question. Maybe some people in the in the chat have more insight on that. Okay. Again, with a wash, I'm using a black wash. For those of you that are new to painting, basically a wash just um, adds depth and shadow to a miniature. I'm painting it onto the miniature, and then it will rest in the recesses, just like it did in the leg there. Um, to add shadow. Uh, we want to be careful not to get it on the clear effects as much as possible because we want those to remain clear and transparent or semi-opaque, I should say. It's not totally transparent. Um, going a little heavy on this, which is okay. I kind of want it to be a little on the darker side which is fine. And then just working this wash into the details on the face, which is important. And this is where the texture and the, and the, the actual model itself and the sculpting really comes out. And you start to see the work, the incredible work of the WizKids team and the level of detail that you get in these minis. Pretty awesome. I think that might be it for now. Let that sit for a bit um, while I do another part there, but you can see how that looks. It's a bit of a mess, but it will change very soon. Very, very soon. Back to questions. Um, how, how do you get through? This is from Kriva, Kriva Havoc. Um, how do you get through the boring stage of having to paint several minis that are the same shape? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so I, I do that with uh, guards. I used to do that a lot, again, in uh, war, war, paint, uh, war gaming, um, where you know you just have basically rank-and-file troops. Um, I did zombies, a ton of zombies for uh, Sentinels of the Storm, and I've used them in a lot of streams since. Um, so, yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, what I do is I batch paint them, so I will do the same color across all, but that gets pretty tedious as well. But you're done them all at the same time, and then you're really happy because you have a big thing, and you save some time because of color changes and so, and so on, and brush cleaning and, and all that stuff. Um, when it comes to monotony, for me, it has not, less to do with the mini itself, and more to do with um, more to do with what what I'm doing while I'm painting. So, if if it is a monotonous kind of you know, if I'm painting a horde, 
then I will paint. Uh, I will watch something, have something in the background to kind of listen to that will entertain me while I'm doing it. That's the first thing. Second thing, too, is I would suggest that you find ways to um, not innovate, but personalize or uh, kind of make each one a little bit different, if that makes sense. So if uh, how do you how do I personalize this this troop? How do I kind of make hit this person a bit more or this zombie different from that zombie? Um, and that kind of can get a little fun. Mix around the color placements on the zombies. You know, one has kind of bluish skin, one has greenish skin, one has whitish skin, and then you kind of go from there. That's how I would do it. That's how I have done it, rather. Um, comment from Kyburn. I have to take my contacts out if if I want to paint. My glasses give me better view of the fine details, so I get it. Yeah, totally. Um, absolutely. I used to wear contacts all the time, but um, if I wear them too long for the day, uh, I get, obviously, strain from them. So painting with them is, is no bueno for me. Um, my eyes just aren't the same as they used to be. They don't, I can't wear contacts for as long as I used to. They're just, they don't take to them as, as well, unfortunately. My eyes, that is. Okay, I am using heavy brown, another extra opaque paint. Uh, and that is what I'm using as the base for all the skulls. There are a bunch of skulls. You use skulls as, um, knee pads. He uses skulls as a necklace. Um, he's using a skull here as a belt buckle and a shoulder kind of decoration. It's not nice, really, but I mean, he's a Baylor, so I don't expect him to be all that courteous. Although I may feel special if a Baylor decided to use my skull on his, or my character skull, not my skull, that would be weird character skull on his necklace. Okay. There we go. Oh, I did kind of mess up a little bit here because this um, this boot actually comes up higher to hold that skull. I didn't realize that, so I'm gonna have to get a little bit more gunmetal and and uh, even up the side there on this. There we go. Now, maybe these skulls should have been like metal, like they were like, like decorations that were made out of the boot, but I like the idea that there's actual skulls. And on the, on the, in the art, in the monster manual, they are actual skulls. So they look like they're painted like real skulls. I imagine these are just different sized creatures. On his necklace, they're like humanoid sized skulls. These are like large creature sized skulls. Very cool. That heavy brown is a really great base for skulls. How many times am I going to say skulls today? Um, thanks, Fairy's Blood says thanks to all the moms in the chat. Happy Mother's Day. You love creatures. <laughs> Fairy's Blood, very sweet. Very, very sweet. Um, question from Sakura. If you. You did have to prime your minis. What primer would you recommend? Um, as usual, uh, surprise, surprise, I am going to recommend the Vallejo spray primer. They've got rattle can primer, um, and they've got brush on primer. So if I'm just doing a single mini, sometimes I'll brush it on um, instead of using a rattle can for, for waste. I also They also have really great primer for airbrush, which I, I use often. Um, but the rattle can primer is super uh, competitively priced. So it's like 10 bucks US for a can, which is pretty insane considering 
what some of the other uh, paint lines sell their rattle can primers for. Um, and it also has two nozzles. So it has a nozzle for um, base coating, so priming, like if you want to do a, a large area, and then a, a thinner nozzle or a smaller nozzle for, um, for like detail work. So that's a great way to do like, if you don't have an airbrush, to do lighting effect or a glow effect or something like that. So uh, check out their primers. They're great. They're key to the colors in the, in the model color and game color line. So they're colored primers on top of it. Really great. I would suggest those. Um, Games Workshop also has great primer, um, but it is quite a bit more expensive. Okay, so now I'm going to go in. I've done all the skulls. Well, all the big skulls. So I'm going to go in and do the smaller skulls. Folks, we're, we're running out of time here. This may have to be a, a two-episoder a two episoder. Uh, because I do want to take time to... Um, I do want to take time to actually highlight the, the skin, um, blend it. So do some some wet blending, um, or not really wet blending, but like brush highlighting rather than dry brushing um, on the skin. So did want to do that. Maybe I'll get that done today and then we can continue on. And then maybe next time I could do some OSL. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'll make this a two-parter. And the first part will be skin um, and such. And the second part will be kind of the special effects uh, and I will do some reflected light from his power sword and from his flame whip power sword. <laughs> it's not really a power sword. <laughs> I don't know where power sword came from. <laughs> it's lightning sword? I don't know. That's what it is, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's from a different lifetime power sword. Okay. All right. So he's got these weird kind of teeth tusks that come from here. So let's get those in there. And then, of course, the teeth looks a little like a minotaur kind of, sort of. But not really. Vicious looking. Starting to come together. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of different colors in this in this mini. I had a hard time fitting them all, so maybe I can fit some more of the colors that I needed into the next part. I figured I'd just paint all these teeth while I have. Well, I have this color here. Again, using heavy brown. It's got this wicked kind of grin going here. All right. Uh... The skulls are base coated and the skin is pretty much um, dry. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna now go back. Well, let me answer a couple questions here. Uh, oh, we lost the D&D chat for a sec. There it is. Um, okay. Do you think Whiskids is going to release... This is from Noah's Minis. Do you think this is going to release models for the Demon Lords? Would love to paint a Jubilex model. I don't know. That's a good question. I will ask that question next time I chat with the fine folks over there. Um, but that's a good one. It'd be great. Um, I'm not using Bloody Red yet. What am I doing? I'm going back to Heavy Red. We're going to bring back that, that kind of mid that mid high mid range color um, 
That's one, that's one more question. From Dina Cole, is there a miniature that WizKids hasn't made yet that you would like to see? Ooh, that is a good question. Um, yes. I would love to see um, uh, in the D&D Nolzers line, so the D&D line, I would like to see um, adult and um, ancient dragons. They've already showed off a uh, sapphire dragon, pre-painted, but I want unpainted. Yeah, I want unpainted dragons, large ones, huge ones. That's what I want more than anything. And then we'll do a whole other series on big dragons. And the great thing about the cool thing about the D and D dragons is that um, you know the monster manual talks about how they age and how they're different. Um, sorry, what I'm doing here, folks, just um, stepped ahead without explaining it, is now I am going back in and I am lightening the skin outside of the recesses. So I'm just picking full muscle groups and just delineating them from the others using some heavy red again, and that will just bring them back up to kind of a lighter color leaving that darkened, black-washed color in the recesses, like that. Now, there's certain areas I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it on the bottom of the leg, the very bottom of the leg. I'm going to let that kind of still be dark, I think, for the most part, because that's where the shadow sits, and that's fine. Um, but everywhere else, I just want to bring up that color a little bit, just so we can um, work it up nice and subtly through some some color choices here. Like that, you see the leg now, it's got some muscle tone and we're gonna carefully and, you know, incrementally lighten the, the skin. Will uh, Willesco says that is looking really good. I never had the funds to use minis, but this looks like a great addition. Thank you. Can be pretty addicting and fairly expensive if you get into it, uh, but they really do add something. I, I do love having miniatures for, you know, classically. Um, when I grew up, it was all theater of the mind. We didn't really have minis, even though you know, minis were available. Um, but uh, I love that that. You know, we have them today um, specifically just for um, situation, uh, spatial awareness. So where's my where's my character compared to that character, to, to the mini um, or the creature uh, and the rest of the party? I think it helps kind of for people, especially around our table, for people to kind of understand where they're at and what they can do and what things look like. It kind of helps them to get into character a bit more. So that's why we use miniatures. Um, but I tend to only use them necessarily for big moments. If you watch our streams, you'll know I'll, I'll use them for big moments um, or battles or encounters. Just again, to let the players know kind of where things are happening and where they are in conjunction to those things. Um, okay, so just still picking up with the muscle groups in the chest, keeping the darkened heavy red in the recesses. Like so. Perfect. All right, that's a little quiet without my sirenscape today. Um. Just scrolling again, folks, put question before your question so I can see it. Uh, and if I don't answer your question and it seems like I've passed it, um, just re-ask it again. Uh, I know that the mods are really great at kind of letting people know to do that. So um, they'll either let you know or if you just notice that your question hasn't been answered by me, then please go ahead and ask it again. I want to make sure that I catch them all. As many as I can, anyways. 
Okay. And then if, if you have questions that don't get answered tonight or you have like game related questions or anything like that, um, then you can also on Tuesday nights, we have something called behind the screen, which is kind of a behind the scenes look with me at all things Realmsmith, including our streams. And it's your opportunity to kind of ask me, have a Q and a with me regarding, uh, some of your burning questions, uh, regarding like, why did you make that decision during the stream? Or what were you thinking when this person did this? Or how did you set up that encounter? And what was your inspiration behind blah and blah? That kind of thing. But the, also it's an opportunity to ask questions about Nolzers, about miniatures, anything like that. So Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern is when we do that. And then Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, Joel Oje, who plays Fall Fern into the Mist and is playing Plunk Rock in Tides of Wildmount, <clears throat> he holds something called the Player's Table. And that's your opportunity to kind of get a player's perspective on things. Last week he had Adam Maines, who um, currently plays Bolt on Tides of Wildmount and played Dimitri in Into the Mist. And he was on talking about, um, you know, his characters and his inspiration for those characters and so on. So check that out too on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. can't believe we have content four days a week now from Realm Smith. Super exciting. Super happy with it. Okay. So this is coming along. You can see that I'm just doing what I said, which is picking out all the major kind of muscle groups with this heavy red again to bring back that color. I am overbrushing in some places. Oops. But it's bound to happen. Arms done. His abs, he is ripped. This Baylor is he's doing his crossfit. You know what I'm saying? He absolutely lifts. He's getting her done. All right. That's enough, Jason, about the Baylor's exercise. Routine. <laughs> this is what happens, folks. On a Sunday after a weekend, my brain is somewhat dead. <laughs> okay, there we go. I'm trying to get back here. It doesn't really matter. Nobody's really going to see it, so I'm not going to care so much. All right, so that is, oh, didn't do the feet. Um, can you let me, uh, Gary Diamond says, can you let us know in advance when you're going to be incorporating bits? I just want to make sure I can afford it. Of course, guys, that means a lot. Uh, for those of you that don't know what, uh, he means, um, we have, um, for our finale on Into the Mist, we had, uh, the ability for the viewers to spend bits, which you can do through, um, Twitch to actually affect gameplay and be a part of the combat. And uh, it was amazing and we appreciate it. And, you know, it takes resources to do this. And that was a great way for you guys to be involved in the gameplay. Uh, it was a blast. You guys blew every expectation that we had out of the water. We didn't know how it would go. We didn't know how people would respond. And uh, there was a zombie horde that was attacking the town. And... Um, and the viewers ended up um, lobbing arrows, or, uh, volleys of arrows from the walls of this town. Uh, not too many spoilers. I don't want to spoil for people who haven't watched Into the Mist, but um, it was just an incredible, awesome experience. And uh, we're so thankful, guys. You know, we, we appreciate your support, but we also want... Um, I didn't even do the face yet. Um, we appreciate your support but we also want you to feel like you're a part of what's happening. Um, that sure we'll, you know, we'll take your, your uh, donations and your support that your monetary support that way. But, but we always think about what can we give back to make it fun uh, and interactive for you folks um, and to give you some value for that donation or for, for that thing, even though I know that you guys just want to help us out anyway. So anyways, 
all of that to say, yes, Gary, we will absolutely let you know when that time will come again so that you folks can get those bits ready. There we go, Baylor head. All right, so that is the first kind of first mid-tone highlight. Now we're going to go bloody red. And I don't think I can go bloody red directly on the mini at this point. I think it's going to be too bright. But let's see. I am absolutely going to try to do that because um, that will save us a little bit of time. Let me see. Can you let... Uh, yes, yes, yes. Make sure I'm on top of these. Questions. Question. What do you... What do pain... Uh, Dungeon Tube says... What do pain wash do and what are the upside and downside about using it? Uh, let me know what you mean by pain wash, um, Dungeon 2. I'm not quite sure what you mean. If you can just clarify that. Aramil Leodon 3DGC, uh, who I've never uh, seen on here before. So if you're new, welcome. Um, they say, speaking of different colored zombies, what colors do you like to use for their skin? I've got a crazy bunch of them to paint this week. Uh, I did blue, green, um, kind of uh, skin colored, and um, kind of pale um, colored. So those were the colors I used. Um, you, can, you can absolutely choose to do your own, but those were the ones I did. Uh, for the zombies. I don't know if we did a tutorial on those. I don't think I did because I had to get them done really fast. Um, but you can see them in use in a lot of our kind of streams. Okay, so I am going to go with bloody red here. I am using it straight out of the pot to see how bright it is compared to the rest. And I think it's going to be okay. Now this is the opportunity on a miniature. So we, we laid down the base coat. We added a wash. Then we started to lay down the, we came back in with that base coat to kind of brighten it all up. Now I'm starting with my kind of my first highlight. So what I'm doing here is I'm following the muscle groups, just a smaller area within those muscle groups, thinking and imagining that the, the light is coming from above, which is a big one um, for me. So the other thing too is to work in, for some of you that want a bit more of a challenge, Instead of, for example, here doing um, the whole kind of side of his shoulder one color, I'm going to do lines as if it feels like rippling muscle. So I've just done two kind of larger areas. It's hard to see that on there. Um, but I've done two kind of larger highlights rather than one big one. Sorry. Yeah. Um just to kind of give that muscle sinewy sort of ripple effect. Now, again, this is going to be the mid-tone color that I'm going to be using across the mini. That's bloody red. And I'm just going to go across and highlight the entire miniature with it. Well, all the skin. While we answer some more questions. Question from Scuba Studio. If I understand this is beyond the scope of these tutorials, is the is there an airbrush you would recommend? Um, I have a Grex airbrush and I love it. Absolutely love it. It's a great brush. It's, it's a great value for um, kind of an intermediate brush. Uh, it is a bit of an advanced brush, I guess, but it uh, instead of your standard kind of like this airbrush, it's actually a trigger gun kind of uh, situation. It's the exactly what model it is I can bug me next time and I'll make sure that I um, get that information for you uh, or just bug me on the um, the discord but um, but yeah uh, I, I love my Grex airbrush I would recommend it to anybody um, it uh, does great work and it I, I bought this set with an air, it comes with an air compressor and the brush and tools, uh, and it was awesome. So very, very much enjoy it. Okay, I'm going to, again, just go across all these muscle groups with this lighter bloody red color. When I start to sing um, my answers, and that's when everybody has to start worrying. <laughs> uh, 
And as always, I do dilute my paint just a touch when I put it on so that it flows nicely and it doesn't get all kind of gunky. But this skin is coming along. Um, uh, Tanner Mir, Tanner, Tanner me, Tanner me, 54, has a question. You inspired me to get back to painting miniatures. Man, let me just stop right there for a sec because there's nothing more heartwarming and, and rewarding for me than to be told that I've inspired somebody. So that, first of all, Tanner, that means a heck of a lot. Um, anyways, more than I can say. Thank you. Um, thanks. I gave my wife a Nolzer's grizzly bear for Mother's Day. I painted for her. Oh, that means so much. That is so cool. And it's a great grizz grizzly bear too. Oh, that means that's cool. Very cool. You guys, I, yeah, I can't tell you, um, you know, we hear it all the time in our discord and from our community about how much, you know, what we do means to people. And, you know, on, on one end, it's like, what? we're just, you know, normal guys kind of just, and girls just having fun and enjoying life and playing a game that we love and sharing it kind of with the world. And, not really realizing the effect that it's having on people um, until you guys tell us and then thinking, oh, man, like how much of a blessing is it for us to be able to, to, to you know, brighten somebody's day or, and it's just cool. It's just really super cool. It really means a lot, guys. Thank you. This guy is ripped. I do uh, think that, I, I, and I, I have to get better at this. This is something that I'm learning is I need to be able to, um, I find that sometimes I go a little dark in the, in the recesses, darker than I want to. And then there's almost too much contrast. Like my starting point is too dark. So I have to find a way to kind of maybe dilute my washes a bit more um, to not have that happen as much. Um, that's something that I've been trying to work on lately, just being more subtle in my in my shadows. Because like that's really it's almost black in some of these areas. And I didn't want to necessarily do that. I want a dark red. Maybe it's maybe it's using washes a little less. Maybe it's diluting them. Um, or you know, there's probably a lot of ways that I can I can improve that. But that is something I'm trying to improve on myself is just that level of, of, of shadow that I want to get the result that I'm looking for. Because, yeah, this is really dark. Maybe darker than I wanted in, in the recesses. But then again, if this is going to sit at, on your table at a foot to two feet away from your players and from yourself, maybe it's, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's good enough at that point. Okay, uh, last area that I have to do this, this bloody red on is the face, probably the most important area. And again, I'm just hitting all of the kind of higher, higher points on the miniature for that kind of mid-tone highlight. It's definitely popping happy with the level of pop that I'm getting. I'm getting some decent delineation too, you can see. So maybe it's not so bad for the Baylor. We'll see. Also, sometimes I'll think that and then I'll finish the rest of the mini and it's amazing how it changes the color or that, that one area um, a bit. Another way to do it also is to use something like a, like a red wash or red ink, and that will also blend it a bit more together, and it'll bring, you know, that, that wash will rest in the recesses and bring out that black a little bit more too. That's another option as well to kind of help to, to lighten up those recesses. Now, here though, 
Got his arm. See, I'm just going to forget areas. This is what happens. But you all know this by now. You guys that have been watching <laughs> for the last 40, 44 episodes. I didn't even do the neck. The neck is a big one because it's a big open area. That really needs some highlights to make it kind of pop. There we go. Okay. Looking all right. The skin is looking all right. Now I'm going to, uh, for the next highlight, I'm going to mix in some orange fire and answer some questions. Uh, Three Gun Pet says, any thoughts of doing a Ghosts of Saltmarsh stream? I uh, have thought about it, um, but actually I am um, working in a lot of the ship battle um, and information stats and stuff from Saltmarsh into uh, Explorer's Guide to Wildmount. Um, all the stats for the Wave Chaser, for the, for the ship that um, the players are on, um, are actually being pulled from from Ghost of Salt Marsh. So that is really educating uh, it. But I haven't, you know, there's other people doing awesome streams out there for, for Salt Marsh, and it's just not something that is currently on the on the radar. But who knows where that'll go from there. All right, so now that I am done all that, I am going to go ahead and I am going to add this orange fire on the very top. This is the kind of first real, like, bright highlight and I'm just smaller area than I did before and kind of closer to the top. So you can see this muscle group. I'm focusing kind of on the top end of these areas like that. And that's probably going to be final highlight. It's hard to see on here. The red is... I don't know if you can see that or not. But yeah, I'm just focusing it on closer to the top part of the, the group where it would be highlighted by the sun or it would be catching the light and a smaller area. Again, you're kind of incrementally getting smaller and smaller on your highlights. And I'm still kind of following that whole sort of that whole sort of kind of like um muscle fiber approach. Okay, so that's pretty much as far as I'm going to take the chest, but you can see how that's really starting to kind of pop now. A little bit of water here. Just on the peak of the bicep and a 
across the shoulder. I am noticing that my, my bloody red color is actually a little glossy. Um, and sometimes you'll get a batch that comes out a little bit more glossy than others. Um, once I obviously spray this with a um, varnish, a matte varnish, it'll matte the whole thing out. So I'm not worried about it. Uh, it's just that right now it comes out a little bit more glossy. Um, which, like I said, is okay um, until I kind of prime it or varnish it, I should say. Also looks a lot brighter on stream than it does in real life here. Um, but I will take some photos of it for our socials to show you guys the final kind of result. Right. Back of the heel and that heel as well. Oh, back of the leg I didn't do here, so we'll just let it go a little a couple of lines here. <clears throat> this highlights. I'm starting to lose my voice a bit. Okay, all right, and the last thing to do is the feet here. So I'm just going to get in here. And here I'm just highlighting kind of the ankle and some of the ridges for, that lead out to the toes. There we go. Okay. The skin, oh, the hands. Man, I haven't even touched the hands <laughs> in a couple steps. Oh, dear. This will happen, folks, while you're kind of focusing on things. You miss stuff. Now, I say hand because the other hand doesn't actually have any hand to it because it's kind of engulfed in that in that flame whip. There, I'm just going back to the bloody red on its own. Delineating the fingers like that. And then I'll go in with some of that orange fire mixed with the bloody red, and I can just hit the knuckles like that. Along the bottom here, along the top of the thumb, where that light would hit, along the other knuckles, and the thumb here. There we go. All right, looking mean. Looking mean. I am going to add a couple more highlights just here on the chest. I missed the other side of the chest a little bit. I want to just add a bit more here. Like that. Oh, and here above the strap. There we go. All right, that is that uh, for skin, and I think I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. I've got 10 minutes left. i just got to decide. I don't know how many questions there are here. Probably a ton. I got really behind on the question side of things. Uh, maybe I'll take some time to answer some more questions, and then we can continue this the next time. Um, Okay, so have you ever or would you do a repaint 
of on the older D and D models to make them your style. Thinking of old colossal red dragon, etc., to get your dragon fix. Maybe I I I like kind of doing something and then finishing it and letting it go. Um, that's kind of my thing. Uh, I don't come back to minis very often at all, actually. Um, even a mini that I'm not so happy with, I just kind of leave it and I learn. It's it's a it's a it's a snapshot in my progress as a painter. Um, so I kind of usually leave those. Um, but uh, that's a good point. Uh, you can do that. And I know WizKids has been asking us how to kind of paint or re or, or kind of modify existing um, existing minis, like pre-painted minis. So maybe that's an option to do that. There's an opportunity to do that. That might be cool. Uh, what I am going to do maybe, you know what, for the last 10 minutes while I, or 9 minutes while I am sitting here, I am going to take heavy blue-gray and just um, base coat the hair. Uh, and then next week we can come back and finish the mini. And uh, again, we, we would have been done this probably by now if I had just uh, dry brushed that red skin. But I wanted to actually show you how to kind of build up the highlights using a brush rather than to kind of taking the dry brush route, uh, which I've been doing a lot more of lately. Lately I've been <clears throat> doing a lot less dry brushing. Uh, I, I'm dry brushing only when there's like fur or like heavy texture stone um, and then I've been doing this kind of like brushed approach a lot more so you'll see that a lot more for me too um, but I'm just using heavy blue gray and I'm gonna highlight and you're gonna see it again see right now the skin looks dark next to this when these become darker than the skin the skin will pop you have to remember that color is really affected by light and by the other kind of colors around it. Um, and so, you know, something that, a color that looks gold in one light, like a golden yellow, may look more green under a, a different light. Um, and so, which is why lighting is also kind of important while you're painting too. But you can see all, already how that kind of shock of white hair on top is starting to change the look of the Baylor. Comment from Shadster. Remember that you are a player in the Order of Dragons, being not the DM. Painting large and ancient dragons means that you will be fighting them. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Good point. I do not want to give Brandon um, ammo. But mind you, Wild Mount, there's dragons in Wild Mount. And, and uh, who knows what will happen for our players in Wild Mount. And I think also... You know, Brandon is very aware that, you know, he DM me, DMs me in one game, but I also DM him in two games. And so, you know, what goes around comes around. <laughs> um, question, what do, uh, what do, uh, still, uh, it's the same question uh, from, from Dungeon Tomb. I still don't know what pain wash is. What do pain wash do and what are the upside and downside about using it? I actually don't know what pain wash is. Um, I don't know if anybody else in the chat has heard of pain wash. Um, I'd love to answer that question, uh, Dungeon Tomb, but I'm not totally sure what you're referring to. So maybe it's a product I haven't heard of. Um, but if there's anybody out there that knows, please clarify for me because I'd love to answer it. Um, and in fact, I don't even know what it does, so I'm not even sure I can answer that question. Uh, but if somebody else can, please answer it for or dungeon tomb because I'd love to I'd love to hear about it as well and hear other people's thoughts on it. Okay, there we go. Um, but yeah, you can already see how that hair, the, the mane kind of that comes down the back of the balor, has changed sort of the look of the face. And again, it's a lot brighter in here than it is um, on camera. It's a lot more red and a lot brighter than it is in person. It's much more subdued in person. So, but it's getting there. It's getting there. All right, folks, that is a wrap on part one of the Baylor. Uh, the skin is done, uh, most of it is base coated. Next session, what we'll be doing is the wings. Um, and the magical effects 
uh, and all the skulls and such. And we'll also be doing some um, object source lighting, which means reflected light from this energy sword on his hand and maybe on his face. And then some light effects from this fiery whip across the back of his body and on his leg here and on his arm. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, any questions that I missed tonight? I, I didn't get down the way you guys are asking lots and lots, which is awesome. But please save them for uh, Tuesday night. Well, tomorrow night in the break or Tuesday night, um, which is behind the screen. And that is your opportunity to uh, get behind the scenes with myself uh, for all things Realm Smith, including our streams and any questions you have. It's an hour of Q&A, so make sure that you join us on uh, Twitch for that. If you enjoyed what you saw tonight, please consider following us and making us your subscription or your Twitch Prime subscription, which doesn't cost you anything extra and helps us do what we do. It means uh, it uh, uh, it means a lot to us. Thank you to Dungeons and Dragons, Dragons, of course, and WizKids and Vallejo for the opportunity to continue to do this. And for all of your support, folks, we couldn't do this without you. In fact, we wouldn't want to. Um, you are what keeps me coming back uh, every single weekend. And, you know, we get messages all the time of people saying, you know, you get us through the week and I'm dealing with depression and your streams actually help us come out of it. Um, we've gotten countless uh, messages like that. I want to let you folks know that on a weekend like this one where I'm run down, my allergies are tough uh, and I'm just so tired. Um, this is an amazing end to my weekend and to sit here with you folks and chat does things for us too. So uh, even though you feel like we're helping you, you help us. It's a two way thing. So we want to thank you for doing that and tuning in and supporting everything that Realm Smith does. Love you guys. Have a wonderful night. Tomorrow night, uh, episode six of uh, the Tides of Wild Mount, halfway through and is the um, pinnacle of the Tide of Retribution adventure that we're running, the starting adventure from the uh, Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount tomorrow night here at the table. You can see some of the stuff already that is here uh, that will be enjoyed tomorrow night. Um, and then Tuesday, again, behind the screen, 8 p.m., Player's Table, Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And then finally, again, back to Nolzer's on Sunday for some more Baylor action. Brr. Have a good one, guys. You guys have a good night.